So what I'm going to do now is just show you some information about the um, process that I was talking about. There seems to be some sort of design problem I, with the bracket. I think this should be more elongated. Um, and same for the cooling block to match the shape of the die that the heat sink has been pulled down on. Because if you imagine the forces um, that's being put on uh, the die, which is you know, roughly this shape and this size, I think that these maybe these crossbars here should be closer so where roughly where this silver color is here so that the forces are more evenly distributed because what happens as uh, reported by um, this article here uh, Igor's lab uh, it goes into a lot of detail which I won't go into but it basically says a similar thing about the shape of the die causing a problem where current heat sinks can't adequately um, bond and create a good bond with the die itself so this you can see is an image of the heat sink compound um, as it's been removed from the CPU and you can see there's a quite a large area here where no contact has been made with the CPU not even of a uh, heat sink compound it looks like a lot more contacts been made here so it's completely uneven uh, which is quite worrying um, and I've been having heating issues which I'm I, I, well I still don't know exactly what the problem is when I stress the CPU um, it does start to throttle back um, not excessively but it does hit that point where it's just running too hot and I am thinking about getting a bigger um, cooling solution. Uh, the two fan one I realise now should, it's not what I should have bought. I should have bought the three fan one. I basically bought the two fan one because I wanted a quiet machine. Um, but that that was a, a false idea. I should have got the, the big one for you know top of the range uh, CPU. It's going to be the hottest of the lot. Um, so this article goes into this problem um, and. Well, you can see there that the top of the CPU is not even flat. Um, and there again is a picture. You can see there's bits missing here. And there's, you know, investigations. There's also another <coughs> um, article I've seen. Um, yeah, I think there's a possible solution here. There's another article that I've seen. Yeah, it looks like it's created a plate there, a custom plate, and mounted it on, um, which shows it. It's not just with one particular cooler; it's with several uh, coolers. Um, but this website does offer a potential solution, and that involves. Um, removing the uh, what they call the ILM which is what does it stand for uh, independent loading mechanism so it's actually the bracket and the little flap that comes down and you can see from these pictures here he's got it open there and then he's completely removed it here re removed the four screws um, and then he's run some tests and you can see from these results here that basically you put some washers in. Uh, sorry, I should have made that more obvious. Uh, if I go back. Uh, yeah, so there's the this ILM removed. And what he's done is put some washers in here, which obviously raises the ILM away from the motherboard. And the effect of those washers is try several different thicknesses of washers so half millimeter 0.81 and 1.3 and if you look at the results the two thicker washers give the best results but by far the best result has been obtained with a one millimeter washer so it's reduced the temperature as he's measured it by five well nearly six degrees um, 
so that seems like quite a good in there there's a picture of the um, heat sink compound after the block's been removed you can see that's uh, <clears throat> a quite a good spread there so it does seem to be quite a good um, fix got a website here where the problem was first reported so this is WCCF tech um, you can see this is various different coolers this is the one I've got in the middle though it's a H115 is the same uh, pump that all, all of them across the range have got and this is more or less the same shape that I saw when I mounted um, the block originally with the washers so with the LGA 1200 standoffs and the washers on the back plate um, mine didn't look as bad as this it was as far as I remember nearly all covered in heat sink compound but I did see this uh, telltale shape uh, on mine uh, so as I say it seems to be a problem and there's uh, a few articles on the internet about it but they all refer back to this article here um, and it says that if you remember I said there's a slight overlap in the height uh, what they call the Z height of the old socket H5 and the new socket which is called V0 um, you can see the overlaps here the old socket went from 7.3 millimeters and the new socket its upper limit is 7.5 so you can see there's a 0.2 millimeter overlap which is almost negligible but with these tolerances it's uh, it is significant um, so it's probably why people did get away with using an, eight, uh, an LGA 1200 standoff um, with the new socket and had you know, no problems initially with uh, heat and so on but as I say I, I don't have any problems unless I push the uh, CPU to its absolute limit so it's either compiling on all cores or, or rendering on all cores um, where every single core is used and that's whether I'm overclocking or whether I'm just using the stock Intel defaults it, it does get up to uh, that 100 degree, degree range and in, in Linux you can see that the uh, uh, throttling does start to occur so that's the end of the video thanks very much for watching and I hope you'll follow me in my future videos where I start to uh, actually take some benchmarks um, that I'll be using to monitor the improvements in the Linux kernel um, appreciate a thumbs up if you found this useful and subscribe to my channel to get to hear about uh, my other videos. Thanks very much. Goodbye.